Welcome to Swooning Over Stands, a Grunkle dating sim. It's a Gravity Falls fan game. I don't really have any other introduction besides that. I mean, come on, you knew it was your dream to date Uncle Stan. All right, here we go. This is actually, uh, why is that a good animation? Ah, good old road trips, full of promise and ripe with potential for adventures, soul searching and incredible scenery. Or at least that's what you thought before the novelty wore thin. As of now, your legs are cramping up, you've exhausted your travel playlist two times over, and your stomach is begging for something to eat. On top of all that, you're pretty sure you're lost. Driving through Oregon paints a picture of trees, trees, and more trees, especially on the endless, winding roads that you're taking up north. All that breaks the pattern is a sign that zips past with words that you're just able to make out. Gravity Falls. Oh yeah, Gravity Falls, let's go! The road continues on, yada yada yada, something weird happens. My car picks up speed, what? And there's a change, wait, what's going on? The car begins to rattle, there's an emergency crash! What, what's this? I'm in Gravity Falls, you guys! I'm here! Where's Uncle Stan? There's smoke. Why is there smoke? You cough, fumble for the door, and manage to undo the lock just before the door is wrenched outward from your grasp. Something lands on your shoulder. Is it Uncle Stan? A hand! Yes! Are you alright? No, that's not Uncle Stan, but I'll take it. It's Ford. That's the next best thing. A man stands at your open car door. His hand on your shoulder leaves to tilt your head up, and he pulls a flashlight from his coat, shining it in your eyes. Two blinks, and he lets your chin go. His eyes dart over the rest of you, looking for injuries. Still stunned, all you do is watch. What's your name? Type in your name. Uh, alright. Can I do... Uncle Harold? Because I'm going to date Uncle Stan, I I don't know, I, let's just do Uncle Harold. And your pronouns, oh, okay, this is a Tumblr-friendly game, um, he, him. Uncle Harold, I'm Stanford Pines, Ford for short. I would shake your hand, but you look shaken up enough as it is. Uh, yeah, Ford, I, I really am, because I don't see Stan anywhere, I don't know why you're here instead. You seem fine as far as I can tell, but you shouldn't head back out there anytime soon. Where on earth were you driving in such a hurry? You open your mouth to explain when a voice calls from inside the house. Poindexter, this better not be one of your experiments again, I've had this place rebuilt too many times to... Yeah! There's the man of the hour! This game is completely designed with you in mind, and everyone's been waiting for your appearance. Sweet Moses Ford, you've done it this time. What? This had nothing to do with me. I was testing my magnet gun and it must have pulled this victim of circumstance into the house. I suppose it is entirely my fault. I'm incredibly sorry. Okay, I just want to point out how amazing this is. It's a Gravity Falls visual novel. This really reminds me of Doki Doki Literature Club, but uh, the dating part is going to be interesting. Okay, I can reassure him, reassure yourself, or cry. I'm sorry, I gotta cry. I got A tear streaks down your cheek, and before you know it, you're crying. Hey, look, it's fine, all right? Sure, there's a dent in the hood from the shack signage and a crack in the windshield that looks like an ominous triangle, but I'm sure she'll still run. You try to start up the car, it sputters, but ultimately nothing happens. You feel like crying again. Oh, okay, so I just choose crying once, and immediately my character's an absolute crybaby. Nice! You're right, it is cheaper to tow it yourself. Sixer, get that magnet gun out again. No, Stanley, I'm going to fix this. What? Ha, you fixed this mess? Yeah, Grunkle Stan, you tell him. I figured out a few alien vehicles in my time. Nah, you kidding me? It takes some sort of miracle worker to bring this baby back to life, and this miracle worker is on vacation. Stanley, a moment? Oh, okay, I'm just left alone now. You guys, I want to be a part of your conversation. Can you let me back in, please? I, I got this game so I could talk to my favorite heroes. Why are you leaving me? Ford clears his throat, shifting a little awkwardly in place. Seems like they've finished their talk. So there are a few options. My brother Stanley here could drive you out to town to find a place to stay for the night, or you could stay the night here. Uh, you guys? I'm not going anywhere. Don't even mention that. I'm staying here forever. Grunkle Stan, picture this. A whole week of- oh my gosh. Oh yeah, Mabel joined the party. Why is it that everyone automatically thinks I'm at fault? Well, this time it is my fault, but I've invited Uncle Harold here to stay with us for the night, if he'd like. Oh yes, Ford, I like it. I'm sure I can fix this, I just have to figure out how. Yeah, yeah, Mabel, I know who you are. I got this game for the Stan Twins, so you can, you can just leave. Wait, wait, hold on, I haven't even said anything yet. I appreciate your offer to let me stay. And to repair your car. Yeah, it'll be good as new as my hands. I mean, look at my Stanmobile. She's been through the ringer who knows how many times and she's still a beaut. He points out a red car parked a distance away. You can't really see how beautiful it is at this distance, but he sounds really confident. Well, this turn of events is fortuitous or suspicious. 
Uh, I'm gonna go with suspicious. Free repairs, free lodging, what is this? A setup to a murder? You can see the headline now. Unsuspecting tourist dies mysterious death in backwater town. Nah, I don't think you guys are gonna kill me. This is a dating sim after all, and things can't get too violent. Although, if this ends up being like Doki Doki Literature Club, uh, yeah, uh, things could get out of hand. As the pines lead you inside the house, Mabel leaves her number in your phone for you to call whenever, and you find out that Ford's twin goes by Stan. This part's the house, but just outside that door is the mystery shack. Hey, you ever been to the mystery shack before? I wanted to, actually. I saw a bumper sticker while I was on the road and got curious. You're interrupted by a loud triumphant, ha! Those bumper stickers were a good investment, and Sixer says they're too plain and graphically simplistic, and don't even have an address on them. Stanley, how's anyone supposed to find the place to attract customers? Sixer, did you hear that? Well, they are graphically simplistic. I don't know how he found the place, let alone thought what is the mystery shack was compelling. I kind of liked it. Oh, no, I didn't kind of like it. I loved it, but I can't say that to you guys because I can't type anything. Uncle Harold is just going in, saying stuff without my permission. Don't know what you're doing. At that moment, a boy passes in the hallway at the far doorway and Ford calls out to him. Dipper, my boy, I'm surprised I didn't see you run out to the scene of the crime. Crime? What crime? I have an alibi. I swear- Oh, you have someone with you. Hey, haha, I'm not suspicious at all. You're very suspicious, Dipper. Get out of here. I'm here for Grunkle Stan and Ford. Uh, yes, about that. Dipper, meet Uncle Harold. I've, uh, stranded his car here by accident. Okay, yeah, we all know it was an accident, but it's an accident I'm glad to be a part of. One window, the windshield. And Uncle Harold was lucky to make it out alive. He's fine. No injuries, thankfully. The magnet gun's rather safe despite never having been tested in a formal setting. Yeesh, did you not, like, take safety precautions or anything? Actually, the irony of the situation is that I was trying to install a safety precaution. Hey, hey, if you two are gonna do your nerd talk, I'm gonna get Uncle Harold set up. Mabel, sweetie, why don't you show Uncle Harold around? Let him stay in, uh, the storage room. That's still empty, right? I'll make it empty. The rest of the day consists of Mabel showing you the storage room you'll be staying in, then the kitchen, and the living room, and the hallway, and the bathroom, and pretty much a comprehensive tour of the mundanities of a regular house. No, you cannot call the Mystery Shack a regular house. This is the place of legends. Eventually, you find out that the family is even more extended than you knew. The decorative dollies make a lot more sense knowing a grandmother normally lives here, and her grandson, Zeus. Or was it Zeus? Whatever the name, you look forward to meeting him when he comes for work in the morning. When you go up to the attic, Mabel opens the door to reveal Dipper, nose stuck in his book, but you catch him occasionally glancing up at you as he pretends to read. The next member of the family snorts up at you from Mabel's bed, a rotund pink pig who Mabel declares as her best friend and partner in crime waddles. The two are a perfect match, right down to the chubby cheeks and boopable noses. And in the evening, though you'd still been in disbelief over the state of your car, the family dinner and after dinner TV marathon you'd been invited to makes it seem like a normal guest day rather than a forced circumstance. Well, uh, it's about time for bed. Oh wait, it's already morning, what, what happened? Okay guys, I spent a day at the Mystery Shack, so far there hasn't been any dating involved even though this was called swooning over stands a grunkle dating sim but you know i'm keeping high hopes that eventually the dream will come true if you guys want me to play more of this then let me know down in the comments obviously it's different from my other content but if you want to see me play more then i would anyway that's all for this video subscribe for more awesome cartoon videos give a thumbs up and comment below to know what you think thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time